we've had uh, Defense Minister uh, Gallant, we will eliminate everything, an IDF spokesperson. Our focus is on damage, not on precision. Uh, Agriculture Minister Avi Dichter, we are now rolling out the Gaza Nakba, Gaza Nakba 2023, that's how it'll end. Israeli Heritage Minister Amahai Eli, who said a nuclear bomb is quote, one of the possibilities. Uh, Finance Minister Bezal Smotrich, we need sterile zones in the West Bank. Uh, Israeli President Isaac Herzog, it's an entire nation out there that is responsible. This rhetoric about civilians not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. They could have risen up, they could have fought against that evil regime. Another former Knesset member, there is one and only solution, which is to completely destroy Gaza before invading it. I mean destruction like what happened in Dresden and Hiroshima without nuclear weapons. Would you join us in condemning that as well? So I condemn nothing that the Israeli government is doing. Which I guess knowing Ted Cruz is hardly a surprise. Um, It's difficult to watch though when Ryan Grimm so expertly lays out all of these utterly unacceptable comments from officials and former officials on the Israeli side. Saying that, no, 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 like I know some people say that it's just like an accident or whatever, or it's just because the human shields. No, we want to kill as many people as possible. Now, that is not everyone, obviously, in the Israeli government, and plenty of officials never say anything like that, but many have, as he just shotgunned through all of those comments. And that was not enough to get Ted Cruz to back off of his unflagging defense of the current military strategy, not of like the idealistic, like the ideal strategy for dealing with Hamas or you know accepting like oh there's there's been some horrific accidents but like the overall mission is still no he's fine with what's happening right now and Ryan Grimm is going to press him but it's not going to work take a look there is a qualitative difference the israeli government does not target civilians they target military targets. The Israeli government is so stated, bad at their targeting then if they're uh, killing so, so, so many So they're civilians. actually not. They, they, they are, so then they are targeting. No, they're exceptionally good at. So I can tell you there is no military on the face of the planet, including the US military, that goes to the lengths that the Israeli military does to avoid civilian casualties. So I'll but, give you- But the IDF said our focus is on damage, not on precision. Yes, we damage keep to Hamas, different- damage to Hamas, to terrorists. And, and I am no, all for- they, they have said that, the quite opposite. They keep saying that, that what that, they're doing is what they're hey, intending to do. The, and here the, in the that, United that States, is, we that, say that's that, not that, what that's they're doing. simply not true. Yeah, Ted Cruz remains, as always, a possum-faced weenie. Okay, what he- actually believes is I don't care that the civilians are dying. And to his credit, he's advocating for more of them to continue to die because he doesn't think the military strategy needs to change at all. But he is fleeing, tail tucked between his legs from the indisputable quotes that Ryan Grimm is saying. The quote was not, we we don't care about precision, we want damage to Hamas. It's, we don't care about precision, we want damage. That's a defense of what's happening. And again, doesn't mean that that's what everyone believes. And you can have, I guess, some sort of nuanced argument for why we should find acceptable the fact that over 15,000 civilians have died. But that's not what Ted Cruz is doing. He's saying, this is good. They're good at targeting. It doesn't matter that the 15,000 have died. They're doing a bang up job. There's no notes. Just keep it going. Current sitting senator. Jordan, what do you think? If this is an issue that Ken Klippenstein and I just talked about on my podcast yesterday. So we have a ton of new information around the civilian death toll. And in comparison, the New York Times surprisingly did a decent story sizing it up to similar conflicts. But the people quoted in there, I'm talking former Pentagon advisors, were talking about how horrific this is. In part, it's because of the size and the scale of the weapons used in such a densely populated area. They're using 2,000 pound bombs in Gaza, which in places like Jabalia refugee camp is one of the most densely populated places on earth. They're saying they're doing this to take out underground infrastructure, but they don't show any regard for the people living there, dropping leaflets or just releasing social media messages isn't effective when you've cut off communications for people and Mm -hmm. they don't have anywhere to go because they're also still, by their own admission, bombing places in South Gaza. But for the historical comparison, we're on pace to pass the civilian death toll from Afghanistan. This is 20 years of conflict in just a couple months. 
Think about that, 20 years in Afghanistan and the civilian death toll in Gaza is already poised to surpass that in just a couple months. Yep. There is no there is no tactic, there is no caution, there is no concern. This is deliberate. And of course, like you said, it's not surprising that Ted Cruz would defend it, but that there isn't any outcry from the majority of the Democratic Party that the Biden administration that tried to frame at the beginning of their at the beginning of their tenure tried to frame their international relations and foreign policy approach as uplifting and protecting human rights there's right now even despite these numbers are set to lift all restrictions on US weapon stockpiles that Israel has access to there yeah. they've tried to cover up what arms were giving to Israel the, they have no real concern or regard for people who are living there. And it's like you see in some of these comments from Israeli officials, those are certainly adopted even maybe quietly by US officials. They're all complicit and that's just how they see it. They do not care about people who die there. He, like, I don't understand how we cannot all come together around the idea that it is unacceptable to talk about nuking Gaza. I understand that we are in divided, you know, partisan times. I feel like we should all be able to agree that you can't nuke Gaza. But Ted Cruz cannot agree on that. He can't even he could say that's obviously crazy, but that's not what we're seeing, you know, they're just dropping 2000. He doesn't even do that. He won't condemn talking about nuking a densely populated urban area that you can't leave. And this is again, as I always point out, this is not, you know, a conversation on October 8th, hypothetical about is it acceptable to start to drop these bombs? This is after 15,000 deaths and he has no problem with it. He is an utter sociopath and a coward, as I pointed out. And I just want to quickly um, buttress what Jordan was saying. Washington Post said some great, these by the way are out of date. The numbers are worse now, thousands more have died. But for when it was just 4,000 children who had been killed in one month, uh, this was a comparison of children killed in major conflicts, casualties over time. And you can see there's no comparison for how many children had been killed in as short a span of time. Yes, way more children have died in Syria and God, I hope we don't pass those numbers. Although there's every reason to believe that within a few months we will. But that was after over a hundred months. This is one month and you can see the monthly average child casualties and conflicts. The comparison is to Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, Iraq, devastating, horrific wars. And they barely register on the chart. And Ted Cruz, a guy who is pro-life, no problem with it, no problem whatsoever. Jordan, I want to give you a chance for a final comment, but also I want to make sure that people can listen to your conversation with Ken Klippenstein. So could you start by telling people where they could hear that? Yeah, so the show is called The Insurgents. It's at insurgentspod.com or any podcast provider. Uh, this is. It, I thought it was a really good conversation. One of the parts that he also brought up was the tactic question, right? So they're using an aerial campaign in a densely populated area. And that is something the US has certainly shifted to over the past few decades because it's much easier to sell that war domestically because you don't have as many of your troops coming home in body bags. You don't have them coming back in caskets. So. When you're just dropping bombs on people who have nowhere to go or in densely populated areas, and you're not sending in as many ground forces, they're certainly not going into the tunnels, and they certainly didn't at the at the onset. You're it's easier to sell this war in perpetuity. It's easier to create a sense of forever war. And that's what the US has done. That's what Israel's doing here. Mm -hmm. And Israeli officials have made it quite clear after this resumes, after this temporary pause ends. It's going, they're going to resume what they were doing and it's going to be even worse. The defense minister made that clear last week. So it's on everyone to fight for a permanent ceasefire. If you're concerned about the hostages, which every pro Israel and pro IDF talking head in the media uses as their first line of justification for what Israel is doing in Gaza, we, they, they took hostages. Okay. 
and a ceasefire is what's bringing them back. So yeah. why aren't you joining this call for a ceasefire? You could read into that about people's character, what they want, what their outcomes, their desired outcomes are. But it seems like it's not really about the hostages, is it? No, and and yeah, as someone who does actually care about them coming back, I have like, I can't tell you how happy I am that it has been extended the several times that it has and that we've had more days of transfers. And I would love to see that happen until all the hostages and prisoners that shouldn't be in prison have been transferred. But there are other people who, as you point out, are just they're champing at the bit to get this started again. And as you alluded to earlier in our conversation, um, we've already been told about how the ramping up of the bombing in South Gaza has been previewed. We did a video about it. Um, which unfortunately most people don't see because uh, and it's one of the things that makes me most sick to my stomach. Nobody really seems to care about what's happening over in Gaza and Israel. So people don't watch videos. But anyway, we're gonna talk about it regardless. Um, yeah, people were told flee to the south to the south, flee to the south, flee to the south, and now the bombing is gonna be coming to the south. So we're gonna update these numbers at some point, and I can't even conceive of what they're gonna look like in a couple of months. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.